hands coming up. Um, just don't forget to raise your hand or send me a text or drop something in the chat. So we'll get started with Cassidy Hill because she texted. Yeah, hey Gardner. Oh, this past week was really kind of your the 16th game you started that you finally had under your belt. It's essentially one year finally under your belt. What kind of jump do you think you can take? Maybe even in season that would replicate a jump from year one to year two. Yeah, I'm just working uh, with our guys each week, just trying to get you know better and better on the same page. Um, just continuing to build, try to build that chemistry with our guys. Um, you know, continuing to trust our offensive line uh, and just you know build this thing together. I think we have a lot of room to grow um, as a unit, and as a team, and uh, you know that's what we're going to work to do. Cassidy, I muted you because we were getting a lot of feedback from your mic. There you go. That, like you know, or how much do you know now that you didn't even know when you came into that Houston game a year ago, or to the Chiefs game even? Yeah, no, I've learned so much. Um, you know, and I think that's, you know, a credit to a lot of the great coaches and uh, you know teammates I've had around me uh, between last year and this year. Um, they've done a great job giving me information, and I'm doing my best uh, to try to learn it, take it each week, and uh, just kind of keep building week by week. And uh, you know, as you said, you know, continue to progress. Thanks, Cassidy. All right, let's go to Jordan and then Gene. Hey, Gardner. It looked like you had a pretty solid outing overall last week, but uh, going back to that start of the third quarter, I know we've harped on it a lot, but I was just curious on what you saw on uh, the couple passes that you threw away early on in the third quarter. Yeah. Um, you know, we got to do a better, or I got to do a better job. Uh, just working through progressions right there. Um, you know, one, you know, just didn't get backside on progression. Front side was covered. Just got to get back. Uh, the second time, um, picked the wrong side to work. Uh, just got to do a better job seeing the defense pre-snap. Um, so, you know, we can't afford to make those mistakes. I can't afford to make those mistakes and, uh, you know, put our team in jeopardy. And what do you credit to uh, your ability to bounce back after you might have a rough drive or two? and? and to go put points on the board and lead the offense down the field after that. Yeah, no, it's one of those things, you know, we get frustrated, but we, I think more than anything, we're frustrated because we know what we can be and we know what we should be doing. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen glimpses of it this year of, uh, you know, we've moved the ball uh, fairly consistently. Um, it's just being, you know, even more consistent, not having those drive-killing plays, uh, staying out of our own way um, so we can really reach our full potential. Thanks, Gardner. Thanks, Jordan. Let's go to Gene and then John Reed and then Gary. Gardner, you just alluded to these drive killing killing plays. Uh, could you talk specifically about the uh, uh, the play the play on the second drive and the Bengals where it was third and four? You're in the pocket. Did you just kind of think that okay, I, I, if I run here, I'm, I'm going to at least I'm, I'm going to get ahead of the sticks? Were you? Uh, well, well, I'm just wondering what your thought process process was on that particular play. That you just feel like scrambling was going to be at least going to move the sticks. Yeah, um, you know, kind of in those certain short situations, your antennas go up for, you know, kind of those possibilities. I knew they were in a five-man rush with nobody behind. Um, but more than anything, I just got to be more patient. I had great protection. Um, you know, let everything develop, play it out, and then at that point, you know, decide when to scramble. Um, and that's just a work in progress. Something I. You know, I have to get better at, and, um, you know, we're working on it week by week. Thanks. Thanks, Gene. Let's go to John Reed and then Smitter. How you doing, um, Garner? Um, I've never heard you say that you needed, you know, like you young and you need time to grow or anything like that. You never make excuses. What, what has it been like for you um, week to week? A lot be judged on on you on wins and losses, but – you, do, do you see yourself right now as a franchise quarterback? And what's your thought process on that? Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, not anything I, I can decide for myself. You know, it's something that, you know, I just try to be the best I can be for our guys. You know, each day out there at practice, I try to be the best guy, you know, each time we step out there on Sundays. Um, and I know I'm going to give my all and compete for them. And they're going to do the same for me. And I think as long as we do that, uh, we're going to, you know, get this thing going in the right direction. 
Thank you, sir. Thanks, John. Let's go to Gary Demetrius, and then we'll finish with Mark Long. Hey, Gardner, one dimension we haven't seen James Robinson in is a situation where you guys have a pretty good lead in the second half, and you're running some clock. Uh, when the other team is behind, and maybe they got to get a little bit desperate on defense and everything, will James be the type of running back you think will take games over in the second half in those situations? Yeah, I mean, we have, we have so much belief in James. He's, um, you know, really proved uh, that he can really do it all for us. Um, you know, he's one of those guys, we, we want to get the ball to him more. You know, um, we just got to be in situations where we can do that. And uh, I think he can be, you know, a really, really good running back in this league. And the, you know, that one run that was called back the other, uh, the other day, he uh, got a couple of good blocks. He ran over a couple of guys, and he sl slid behind uh, DJ. He was kind of screening and everything. So is James one of the better combination of, of moves and power that you've seen? Yeah, no, I think, and, and vision. You know, I think that's one of the, the best things that he does is, you know, he'll find something out of nothing, um, and every cut he makes, he's moving forward. You know, he's, he's pressing, uh, getting yardage, and then he ends every run physically, you know. Um, you know, I mean, he, he's lowering his shoulder. He's he's hitting safeties, linebackers, whatever. Um, and I think anytime you have a guy like that, that you see he's giving his all for us, uh, it makes everybody else want to step up and help him out. Okay, thanks, Bob. Thanks. Let's go to Demetrius and then finish with Mark. Hey, Gardner. Um, can you just talk about the growth you've seen in, in LaVisca as a receiver over the, the last month of the season and then sort of the chemistry that you guys have built over that same time? Yeah, no, LaVisca's done a great job, man. He's, um, you know, a guy that we obviously know what he can do with the ball in his hands. Um, and he's, you know, working every day, you know, to be a better, you know, more complete receiver. And I think he's he's doing a great job at that. Um, creating separation, catching the ball. His hands are great. Um, and we're going to look, you know, to continue to build on his role and get him the ball as much as possible. How important is it to have a guy like him who can sort of just do everything, but then also – Add, add that threat as a legitimate wide receiver in the NFL. Yeah, I think it's huge. You know, I think it's it's another thing that the defense has to prepare for each week. You know, you never know how we're really going to use him. Um, and he's a guy. You know, for me, I know uh, just giving the ball in his hands. And I mean, I, I don't think I've seen him yet like not make at least one guy miss. You know, he's um, he's really really good like that. And it's 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 huge to have. You know, when you can throw a five yard pass and it turns into twenty. Appreciate it. Thanks, Demetrius. All right, Mark, finish up. Yeah, I want to ask you about this one pass you threw at Houston last year in the second quarter. Uh, it might have been, I don't know where you were, what we were thinking on it. No, um, just kidding with you. Um, listen, what have you seen from Houston? And is J.J. Watt still a guy you need to know where he's at pre-snap every single play? Yeah, Houston's very good. I think one of the things that you see watching tapes, they're they're a smart team. You know, they're disciplined, um, well coached. Like they're going to be in the right positions. Uh, you don't see them uh, get beat from lack of discipline or anything like that. Uh, JJ, he's, he's definitely a guy that you got to know where he's at. You got to have somebody on him. A lot of times, you want to have two guys on him. Uh, the biggest thing with him, man, is he just stop. You know, he's going to keep going. Those second effort sacks, those cleanup sacks. Uh, he, he he gets all those because he he. he is always working, and um, you know I think it's awesome to see one of the guys that's been so good in this league for so long, and it's because of his work ethic and you know how hard he plays. And, and then secondly, just playing a team that's kind of going through turmoil like this is that kind of can be a recipe for them to play pretty well sometimes. Yeah, no doubt. We, uh, I mean, we got enough turmoil and turmoil going on our own. You know, we got to figure our shit out first. Um, so hey, we we're we're fired up. We're ready to go. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are writing us out, but uh, the belief on this team is still very strong, and um, you know, we're ready to get out there as well. Awesome, thanks, Gardner. Appreciate your time, guys. We're gonna make the switch pretty quick. DJ's not too far away. Okay, we're going to get started with D-Rock and then Jordan. 
Hey, DJ, apologize. It's a little off topic, but I'm helping out one of our other writers. Um, are there anything specific that you can remember that Jalen helped you out with in terms of being a better receiver or being a guy that can uh, become a leader um, from your time that you spent with him several years ago? Uh, we talking about Ramsey, right? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, physical, fast, you know, running off the ball doesn't really work with people like him. You have to be um, decisive with every move that you make. Um, when you are getting vertical, uh, he's very strong and can easily push you out of bounds or push you out of the window to where he can easily make an interception. So you just have to be smart with every move, have to be physical, and you have to just want it more than he do, even though that's pretty hard to do because he really, um, you know the type of player that he is. So um, you have to match his intensity. So he helped you out to become a better receiver, the matchups you had with him? Uh, Definitely. Um, Anytime you get to go against guys like him in A.J. Bouye, as soon as you get into the league day one, you know, training camp. Uh, I've yet to go against a corner better. So, thank you. Thanks, D Rock. Right, let's go to Jordan and then Dustin and then Gary. Hey, DJ. In the uh, three games you've played so far this year, the offense has been much more high scoring than in the one you were unfortunately out against Miami. Um, what do you think that is? Obviously, you're a very productive receiver in your own right, but do you think your presence maybe opens up things for the rest of the offense, or what's going on there? Um, first off, you know, we played that Thursday night game um, right after playing a Sunday game, you know, and, you know, changing the game. It's hard to already game plan. You kind of have to game plan for two games in one week, but when you lose um, your main target, you know, that's you automatically going to have to switch the whole office up. You can't really a lot of times just plug and play. So you have to switch things around. And so I think that for one made it difficult uh, on offense. Two, I do think, you know, going out there, you know, I can stretch the field. I can make safeties bag up, even if I'm not getting the ball. If I'm running downfield, the safety have to respect it and things like that crossing routes or underneath routes, get other guys open or in more favorable, favorable matchups. So uh, I think that absence is huge. But I feel like if we go into a game and we take out um, James Robinson, you know, it's going to be a similar situation to where defenses are just bagging up and not respecting the run. Or, you know, if Gardner's not in, people stacking the box, not respecting the pass. So anytime you lose, one of the main guys who take most of the reps, you know, it's going to be difficult. Thanks, DJ. No problem. All right, Dustin, you want to go ahead and then Gary? Hey, DJ, hope you're doing well on Wednesday here. Uh, what is it, what's the difference usually for you at least between a divisional game and a non-divisional game? Um, how much more does it really mean uh, in a division that's close like you guys is, this year is? Um, honestly, it's no difference for me. Every game to me is a chance to show who I am and I'm playing in the NFL. So it doesn't matter if I'm playing you twice or I'm playing you once. Um, I want to be dominant. Uh, yeah, I approach it the same way, you know. Uh, I feel like that second time that you play a divisional opponent is a little more tough because they just saw, you know, what you can do and now they're game planning for things like that. But I think that's the only difference. I'm still coming out with the same mentality to win. I'm coming out trying to be the best on the field. And, you know, I had to hold myself to that standard, no matter division or not. Thanks. All right. Thanks, DJ. Thanks, Dustin. Let's go to Gary, Demetrius, and then John Ogier. Hey, DJ. Uh, you know, teams try to get a second or third receiver to keep guys like you from getting double covered. But... How can a running back like James Robinson also help you in that regard? And how does he help the passing game by his threat running? Um, one thing, when people double cover you, they like to use um, two high safeties. Uh, a lot of times cover two or two man. 
but when you have a running attack, uh, those two defenses aren't that good against um, stopping the uh, run. So, you know, it kind of forces you to use, to double cover in a different way, to bring other guys out um, so that you can still be there to stop the run. And I think that's what he helps with. So it forces you to, uh, if you're going to double cover me, you know, if I'm backside and you want to double cover, you have to kind of show it in a different way. And that's where studying comes in. That's when you know if it's one high safety, but this safety on your side is coming down, looking now, he's probably dropping out to take the inside away, corner, go outside, uh, things like that. But even with that, if two guys on me, that means somebody isn't, somebody have a more favorable, favorable matchup again. And you always can just, if they in cover two, hand the ball, run between the tackles. And our running uh, offense is pretty good. So I like that matchup. And I think you mentioned this a few weeks ago, but you talk about how much fun is it to downfield block for James? Oh, it's uh, it's pretty easy, honestly. You just run and get in the way. Uh, that's it. Or you run and hit him for a second and he's past you and then it's off to the races. So I like it. You know, if I have to come in and get a safety, I know uh, I'm going for the kill shot. But if I can't get it, I got to get a little bit of him and he's going to get out and make somebody miss, or he's going to run somebody over and allow me to talk smack. So uh, I like for Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Let's go to Demetrius and then John Ozier, and then we'll finish with Gene. Hey, DJ, uh, how much growth have you seen out of uh, LaVisca Chenault this season and, and just sort of where have you seen him grow as a receiver specifically? I didn't hear that second part. Where have you seen him grow as a complete receiver specifically? We, we we know he can do everything like carry the ball or take a handoff every now and then, but what what have you seen him as far as his growth as a receiver? Um, you know, the main thing that I'm always uh on him about is just knowing exactly what to do. Not only knowing what you have to do, but knowing what the defense is doing to take away to take you away. And that's something that he's got way better at. Um, his understanding of it. And, I mean, since he's been here, he's been a good route runner. He's been physical. Um, you're not going to press him. Um, he's really physically gifted, and he uses that to his advantage. And he gets open. He catches the ball very well. Um, you know, he haven't, we haven't been able to utilize him as much as the good receiver that he is, but like last week's show, I think he had like 81 yards in the first half. You know, that's not easy to do in the NFL. And, you know, he did it pretty easily. He made all his plays look easy. So that's one thing I do uh, envy of him. You know, I take some hits, but for some reason it seems like he don't really get hit as hard. So Appreciate it, man. Thanks. John, Osher, you want to go next? And then we'll finish with Gene. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Chenault, so thanks, DJ. Uh, no problem. Double ran me. There we go. All right, Gene, you want to bring us home? Uh, DJ, I was just curious, uh, if you think back to, I'm assuming, some point in the preseason, when did you first, real, when did James Robinson really first catch your eye? Um, probably early on with uh, camp, just him and Ziggy both run the ball extremely hard every time. You know, he wasn't in pad a lot of the times, but you see a guy who gets the ball and take off and then run 50 yards, come back, do it again, do it again, do it again. And so it was, you know, you see that and you're like, this guy has good vision and he's he has to work at to go along with it. But that first game, you know, being able to see him, you know, live reps and do the same thing, just take what he does, practice field, and take it to the field. You know, you knew that, you know, he was here for uh, business, you know, and he's not a guy that's just a character in the locker room. He handled his and go about his way. And, you know, you got to respect it. So uh, when you see what he's done these first four games, getting ninety at least 90 scrimmage yards each game, uh, th does even that kind of production in any way 
surprise you that he would get it to that level that quickly? Uh, no, because I'm a person who, once I see it, I expect it. So, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I expect it to happen and I need it to happen, you know, because we want to win. So, you know, I go to him all the time and tell him, you know, how big of a part of the offense he is for us, for me. Uh, but surprising, no, because at this point, you know, he got here for a reason. You know, uh, he's our starting running back for a reason. And he put up the stats that he has for a reason. So not surprised at all. Thank you. Thanks, Gene. Thanks, DJ. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye, everybody.